Hello, my name is Christopher Martinsson and I work as Field Application Engineer at Knowhow Solution. In this video, I'm going to show you how to debug the Linux kernel using Trace32. Before you start debugging, there are a few things you need. For example, the VM Linux file. The VM Linux file contains all the symbols for the Linux kernel. A normal file size of the VM Linux file is above 100 megabytes. So if your VM Linux file is smaller than that, most likely it has been stripped. So then you can't use it for debugging. Also, it's very important that the VM Linux file is from the exact same build as the kernel that you have flashed on your system. In my case, I'm using an IMX7 and running the Linux kernel and file system, etc. from an SD card. So my VM Linux file must match the exact build as the kernel that I have on the SD card. You might also need the kernel sources and I have put them all in this folder here. And I've also two other files, a kernel module, the debug symbol for those and the corresponding source file. If you would like to debug this kernel module. And to get started here, we now need set up basic debugging. I'm going to do that by copying an example script from the demo folder for my IMX7 board. I'm going to copy into my project directory and change the name of it. And then I'm going to open it in an editor and do some modification. Since this script was not really meant to be used for Linux debugging, there are a few things that we need to remove. For example, in our case, all cores will be enabled when we are attached, since we'll be attaching to running system. So there are a few things here in the beginning that we can just remove. There are also a few things regarding loading some example application and setting some registers and so on, and we can remove that. And then there are a lot of windows being opened here that we can just remove. And the subroutine we are not using, so let's remove it. So now we have a very small script and I'll just add the list command to the end so that we'll see the list window. So let's save it and switch to trace32 and see if it's working. I will run the script from the command line and as you can see, it seems to be working. We can see the assembly code of the target and we see the uh, wait for interrupt instruction, which is it's fine. And uh, But if we start the execution, you will notice that it says stop by vector catch all the time. And this is a problem that we need to fix and we need to change the configuration of the debugger. Because default, the debugger is set up so that the execution will always stop when we have an exception. But in the case of debugging the Linux system, we can't have that since the Linux kernel use these exceptions. So we will need to add a few things to our script. Again, I will look in one of the example script because there are some example script in the demo folder for how to debug a Linux kernel and a Linux system. So let's locate something here. For example, there are some scripts here with example how to set up Linux debugging. So let's open it and look at it. Here at the beginning you see there are some command for data abort, prefetch abort, and undefined, etc. And we need to copy those. And the MMU space is on, we will also need since we are debugging a Linux system. And the IMask ASM is also useful, so let's copy that and add to our script before the system mode attach command. So let's save the script and run it in Trace32 and see if it's working. It looks the same, but now when we start the execution, we don't see this stop by vector catch. So that's good. 
So now we have the basic working for debugging. So the next step is that we need to load the kernel symbols to be able to debug the kernel. And we can see that here in the example script. So I will just copy this part and I will skip the strip part command, uh, part for now because I will add that later on because that requires some adaptions. So add a command here in our script. And then there are some other things that we need because we need to tell the debugger the structure of the MMU. And this is done here with these commands here. So let's copy those as well. But there might be a few things that we need to modify. If you look in the first command here, the mmu.format, that tells the debugger what format the MMU has. The Linux format, that's fine. And also the next option there, swapper page there, that's the starting point of the page table, that's fine. And then we have the virtual addresses, and that's mostly correct. But the last option is the physical address of the RAM, and that's wrong in our case. It should be 8 million. So let's change it. Okay. So let's save our script and run it in Tracer 2 from the command line. As you can see now, it looks a little bit different. And that's because now we have actually successfully loaded the symbols. And we can see that we are in some do idle routine, which is reasonable. But we still can't see the source code. So we'll need to fix that. If I open the area window, you will actually see a warning there saying that you can't find a certain source file. And if we look at the path there, you will, we will notice that this part is not available in my PC because this is on the PC that the kernel was built on. So we need to adapt this. But if we look in my project folder here again, and on the kernel sources, I can see that they have this arch folder here. So what we need to do, we need to remove everything in the path below Arch, starting from Linux custom, and then add something else there. So again, I will run this from the command line so it's easier to add to our script later on. So we're loading the VM Linux file, and don't forget the no code option. And then we add a strip part option here with Linux custom. So we will remove everything in the path up to Linux custom, as you can see now. But we also need to specify the base directory here, because now we're just using our current working folder as base, and that's not correct. So we also need to fix that. And this can be done from the command line or from the menu. I will just show you where in the menu you can do this, but we will actually do it from the command line because then it's much easier to add to our script. So the command is symbol.sourcePart and set the base deal. And then you just specify where the kernel sources are located. As you can see now, we can see the source code in the window up here. So we can just add do these two commands to our script. So let's just copy them. Okay, so let's save, save our script and try to run it again and see if it, everything is working as it should. Yeah, so now we have set up basic debugging of the Linux kernel and we can, for example, try to set a breakpoint somewhere in the kernel in, for example, ktime underscore get. We can run until we hit the breakpoint and that is working. And you should also be able to look at variables here. And also try single stepping your code. Note that single stepping your code in the kernel could behave a little bit strange, but that is due to the compiler optimization of the kernel. You might also have 
kernel modules that you would like to debug. And to be able to do that, you need to enable the kernel awareness in Trace32 or the Linux awareness. And again, we will look in our example script for Linux debugging. And as you can see, there is a task.config and menu.reprogram command. So let's copy these two to our script. Like that. And let's just save it and run the script again. As you can see now, we have also a Linux menu. And that's in that you can see a lot of things, for example, the processes, I'm not really interested in that right now, but also the kernel modules that are available or loaded into the kernel. So these you can actually debug, but I don't have the symbols files for these, but I have another one that I would like to debug. So let's switch to the terminal here. First of all, if I just run the lsmod command, you will see the same kernel modules as I saw in the debug in Trace32. But if you would like to insert a new with the mod probe command like that, and I would like to debug it, I can do it good do that. But first of all, I would like to use the debug from init from the menu here and just type in the kernel module name. And when I hit go, the debugger will automatically set a breakpoint in the Linux kernel and it has a condition on it. And the condition is if this uh, kernel mode is available or not. So this means that when we will insert this kernel module using the terminal, you will notice a lot of things happening here in the background because it will load the symbols, set a breakpoint on the init function, and then run until we hit the breakpoint. So now we are standing here at the init function in this kernel module and we can debug it from there. And as you can see, we have actually, when it comes to the symbols, we have two symbol files, both the kernel and the kernel module. And you can load as many as you like. So that was all I wanted to show you when it comes to setting up debugging of the Linux kernel. Thank you for watching.